Welcome to your first Flip Classroom lesson. Remember to take notes on the note sheet. You'll probably need to pause the video while you write your notes down. Also remember that you can always rewind if you miss something. And the PowerPoint print, uh, presentation is online if you want to print it out and follow along with me. Now, on to the lesson. This lesson is on the scientific method. What? You say you learned it last year? Well, yes you did. And the year before that, and the year before that. And guess what? you're going to learn it again next year and the year after that. And when you get to college, you're going to still be learning it. Why? Simple answer. Because it's very important in science. Whenever you do an experiment or try to solve a problem, you need to go through things in a rigorous way to ensure that the results are valid. So in class today, we did a little activity with soda cans to help us remember what the scientific method is about. Here's a quick recap. I had two containers of water and I first said, Look, I have some regular cans of Mountain Dew, six. Regular can of Red Bear, six. Okay, Sunkist, you get the idea. So the regular cans sink in here. The diet cans, though, remember what happened with them? Okay, the diet cans float. Okay, so your job was to come up with a hypothesis as to why the regular cans of soda sank and the diet cans of soda floated. I also might have done a couple of different variations with you, so if you got that hypothesis and you knew the answer already, I did a couple other variations maybe. Um, what about a Coke can? A regular Coke can. What happens with it? Okay, doesn't quite fit maybe. Um, this can of Mountain Dew. Okay, maybe doesn't quite fit again your hypothesis. Um, this one, I also had this full and everything floated in here. Then I might have also done a couple of tricks where I shook them with my right hand or I shook with my left hand and I put them in and, you know, it floated instead of sinking or something like that. Like now it floats instead of sinks, okay, when normally it should sink. So I might have done some things like that. But your job is just to come up with a hypothesis for the first one, why the regular can sink and the diet cans float and make sure you explain so that's a, a legitimate hypothesis that we could test it. Now let's get to the scientific method. Make sure you have your notes out and remember to pause the video to take notes. I'm not going to give you much time because I'm trying to keep the video file short. So first, what is the scientific method? Well, the scientific method are the steps that people use to find the solution to a problem. And notice that I didn't say scientists use. I said people use. Okay, it's not just scientists that use them. Everybody uses them. Usually, though, most people just run through these steps subconsciously. You don't think step one, step two, step three. You just go through them subconsciously. We're going to give an example of that in a minute, and you and your partner are going to come up with examples of that tomorrow. Um, I'm going to say that there are five main steps to scientific method. Some people say that there's four steps. Some people say six. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's the process that matters. Okay, on to the steps. First step is you're going to ask a question. Why do the diet cans float and the regular cans sink? Okay, it's the question that you want to find the answer uh, to. And usually then you're going to make some observations that's going to help you come up with that question. Uh, kind of using your five senses. We saw people looking at the can. Um, people were shaking them, try to you know listen to them. Some people were trying to taste the water. Okay, you're using your five senses to help you come up with this question. Once you have your question, you're probably going to form a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a testable prediction. Okay. A lot of people call it an educated guess, which I think is fine. Some scientists don't like that definition because they say it needs to be more than just a guess. So they define it as a testable prediction, a prediction that can be tested. Okay, doesn't matter, I like both, educated guess, testable prediction, um, whichever works. Okay, so You're getting your prediction of what happened. Again, your prediction as to why the diets float and the regular sink. It's going to be something that you can test to see if it's correct. Does your hypothesis need to be correct? No, of course not. It's just an educated guess. So if your hypothesis for the cans come, turned out to be wrong tomorrow, doesn't matter. Just a hypothesis. Okay, an educated guess, a testable prediction. As long as we can test it, it's a legitimate hypothesis. 
Okay, so obviously the next step is then to test the hypothesis. And when you are testing your hypothesis, usually you're going to have a control and variable. Okay? And you think about math class with a variable. A variable is something that changes. Okay? When you design an experiment, you're going to have one part of the experiment or one run of the experiment stay the same. That's going to be the control. It's the one that you compare it to. Then you'll run the experiment, you'll change something. Okay, you'll change a variable and see if there was a different result. We're going to do a, a lab next week where you're going to be rolling cars down a ramp. Okay, you'll get your control, you'll get kind of what the speed or what the velocity is. And then I'm going to say, okay, try to make it go faster. Change something to make it go faster. Okay, so you're going to change a variable. Maybe it's the slope, maybe it's the weight, maybe it's, I don't know, you'll come up with something. But the variable is the changeable part of the experiment. The control is the one that stays constant, is the one that you compare it to. Okay, after you test your hypothesis, you're going to analyze the results. Okay? Hopefully they are going to match and support your hypothesis. But that's not always the case. Okay, let's say that they do, let's say the results do match your hypothesis then you can draw your conclusion or develop your theory. Okay? It's kind of basically that you were right. And a theory can actually become a law if when tested repeatedly, the result is always the same. Like the law of gravity or Newton's laws of motion. Okay? If the theory can be tested over and over and over again and it is always correct, it can become a law. What if the results of your experiment don't back up your hypothesis. Can you go back and change it? Sure. Um, we'll see lots of examples of this through the year. We will start, when we do our plate tectonics, we'll start with the continental drift hypothesis that Alfred Wegener came up with. And, you know, some people thought that was right. He certainly thought that was right. We tested it, and it, uh, didn't, the results of the test didn't really back up his hypothesis. Um, we came out with something called seafloor spreading. Harry Hess came out with seafloor spreading hypothesis for the continents of the ocean. Okay, not everything in that was exactly correct. So now we're on the plate tectonics theory. Okay, so we're down to this theory step. Um, it's not a law. Okay, it's, it's a theory. It's what we think is correct. But we certainly need more evidence to back it up. So you can go, these steps don't have to be gone in different order. You can back up. If the results don't match it, you could change your hypothesis. And we're going to see that in the next experiment that we do. So, we're going to do an example. And you're going to be doing an example like this tomorrow with your partner. And um, again, I stress it's the steps that we go through. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a little made-up experiment. Um, but hopefully you'll see that you do run through things like this in your everyday life. So, my made-up example is Mr. Meat. So let's say you go down to the cafeteria and that's a Friday, and they have a big sign up on the whiteboard that says, Today's special is Mr. Meat. Oh, yay. Okay. So first thing is, you ask a question. What might your question be? Is it pork? Is it chicken? Is it, I don't know. How about, what is it? Okay, that's your question. Second step. Form your hypothesis. I think it's... I don't know. What do you think it is? I'm going to say, I think it's chicken. Maybe you say, I think it's pork. I think it's whatever. It doesn't matter. Your hypothesis is what your best guess is. It's your testable prediction. Okay, We could test to see if it's chicken. Our third step is test the hypothesis. Okay, How do you want to test this one? Well, how about we smell it or we taste it or we ask the, the guy or lady behind the counter, you know, is it chicken? Okay, so we can test it lots of different ways. Okay, so let's say we taste it. We're going to analyze the results. And let's say, yep, it tastes like chicken. Okay. So then maybe we're going to develop our theory or draw our conclusion. And we're going to say, it is chicken. Again, a very simple example of the scientific method. But you see, you know, you do run through this subconsciously. You don't go step one, step two, step three, step four. What is it? I think it's chicken. Okay? You go through it subconsciously. You do. You go up there and say, what is that? Well, maybe it's chicken. You smell it. You taste it. Oh, yeah, it's chicken. All right, it's good. Okay, so you do run through these steps in your everyday life. Like I said, you and your partner are going to come up with some examples here. 
Now, we get over this idea that you don't always have to go through these steps in order. Sometimes you're going to backtrack. Okay, so we could do an example with that. Let's say that, you know, I, I think it's chicken. I smell it. I taste it. It doesn't taste like chicken. Could I go back up and then say, oh, my drawing isn't working. Okay, now I think I have my my arrow working here, my drawing working. So, I smell it, I taste it, I say, ooh, that's not chicken. Can I then go back up and form a new hypothesis? Say, oh, it's pork. And then maybe, I, you know, because I already tasted it, I go right back down and say, yep, it's pork. Right? Could I go back up and say, God, what is it? Is it edible? You know, I could change my question even. So we can go through these steps in different orders. It doesn't always have to be sequential. You might go forwards, you might go backwards, but again, it's the step that everybody goes through, okay, in this process. Um, that's the scientific method.